mechanics, aren't you? whispered Jackie. She was sprawled out on the restaurant table. The marinara sauce had already begun to seep its way up to the embroidered image of Satan that was stitched into her dress. Funnily enough, the bits and pieces of garlic bread stuck in her black, greasy hair seemed almost fitting, like geese in a lake or razors in candy. The waiter was a sophisticated dwarf who was not at all amused by the antics of this ill young woman. He had a mustache after all. Man, we politely ask that you not feed the fish their own kind, for it is not I who can wheel the barrow, but rather the barrow is the one to wheel. Jackie looked at him with unfocused eyes, eyes that would soon bleed boiling butter and leak onto the fresh white tablecloth. Eyes that would never again see the giant mechanical bird seize on the pavement. Her mouth opened. Why should I listen to such a rubber cane? When I crawl up the avenue, I can smell the children running running away from your torturous metal gaze. I, I can breathe on the egg, and the egg breathes back, she muttered. You absolute pint. You are forgetting the most crucial of all details, spoke the waiter. I am a buckle-crunching soup booter, one that will not stand for this type of essay. Just then, the table gave in, and Jackie fell to the checkered tile floor. The sound of her padded skull smacking the ceramic gave the committee a healthy scare. The red puddle on the ground was an enigma, as no one could quite tell the substance. Blood? Sauce? It's all the same on the moon. Now the chef was an albino, sociopathic, seven-foot-tall, drunken man. When he wasn't prancing around the kitchen with a flaming mouse at the end of his spatula, he would reach his hands into the pig slot bucket and spread the mixture onto any dish he could find. A green shaggy rug would have to suffice today, tomorrow, January. He dropped down to the rug, letting his cheek kiss the dry yarn. The toad in his pocket fell freshly dead, leaking brown saliva onto the carpet. The liquid was thin and dried leaving a malicious, crusty film on the green rug. A cinder block fell from one of the ceiling tiles, and its southmost corner punctured the skull of the chef, spewing his bread-like brains all across the kitchen, and leaving a brief echo of the man's horrifying last scream. Like a duke in the morning, the industrial oven door fell open, and not seconds later, the ghost of a Midwestern beanbag salesman crawled out, disemboweled. His legs were mostly intact, save his right foot, which appeared to be chewed off by some sort of mailbox connoisseur. 
The ghost then rotated 64 degrees clockwise and floated softly through the metal door into the dining area. By now, as most antique, macho, lung-loving lettuce indulgers may have guessed, a thick, negative fog had amassed in the restaurant. The dancer was crying very loudly. Who could blame her? Her naked, burned flesh lay shredded on her chalky muscles, like paint peeling off an old barn. The grinning, intoxicated Japanese man, the one playing the glockenspiel, took another shot of whiskey. Instead of falling into the coiled stomach, the alcohol poured down the back of his Hawaiian shirt, falling from a gaping, bloody hole in the back of his broken neck. The 35th brick on the east wall was pushed out onto the ground, and a tongue extended from the gap. The tongue then wrapped itself around the warm corpse of the now silent dancer girl and retracted quickly, taking her along. Now the body was much too large to fit through the small hole in the brick wall. The hole was, of course, only one brick wide. Because of this, only a small portion of the dancer's self was able to be pulled through. The rest of her fell sloppily to the floor in an unrecognizable mass of blood, flesh, and bone. Fascinating. Fascinating. Christ, man. Makes 
Just you want to get down on your knees wow. and pray. Nice. Come on. Oh my god, look at that. Dear. Dear, 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 dear.